The one person very easily that I have to thank for being where I am today is my mother. She came to America from Mexico, so we immigrated from Mexico, my sister and I with her, and we came to San Jose to, you know, for the American dream, to build a better life. And in the midst of all that, her working two jobs and us not having very much money and being in a new country, uh, my sister ended up with the wrong kids and she ended up with the wrong guy who got her pregnant at 16 and took her, dragged her out of the house, took her to New York and was abusive with her and it devastated my mother. She came to America to build a better life for two kids and almost within a year lost one. And so then she comes to me and in Spanish, it's like, Mauricio, this can't happen again. You're going to go to college and make sure it doesn't happen again. And so the rest of my life has been trying to live up to what she said. And so then, you know, I, I left engineering, which is what I'd gotten my degree in. And I wanted to do design and I ended up instead joining a nonprofit because I wanted to see if there was something that could be done that could have helped my mother so she wouldn't have lost both her kids. And so for 20 years, I ran social service programs and they were considered some of the best in the country. President Clinton invited me to 99 to the union address to honor our work. But at the time that he invited me, it was like, I'm over there. This isn't working. You know, I was running social services. We're getting all these awards. And I was seeing the kids of the first kids I trained coming back into my program. So again, it was like not that, you know, the, the parents were able to keep one or two kids safe, like my mother kept me safe, but another kid would get into crisis. And that's what I was seeing coming through my program. Some other, that's not what my mother wanted. You know, she wanted to save all her kids. And so then I became questioning of what was going on. And so the second person that had a huge influence in my life was uh, then Mayor Jerry Brown, who's now governor of California. And I was at the point that he called me, he was complaining that the city of Oakland was going to get $10.2 million to run youth programs. He knew I, I ran youth programs. This money was for another organization. And he was complaining, oh, you guys are just creating jobs for yourselves, you know, that you nonprofit folks are just, you know, poverty pimps. And he actually used that, that wording. And I'm with, I hadn't heard poverty pimps since the war on poverty started and the Black Panthers came to UC Berkeley campus and said, ah, war on poverty, you guys are just all going to get jobs. That money should go to us. These were dads trying to have lunch programs for their, house their own kids, whatever. They want to take the initiative and they're over there, they called all of the sector kind of poverty pimps. And here's Jerry Brown 30 some years later saying the same thing. And you know, I was, I was running these programs. And so I, being a, I, mean, I was a little defensive and blamed him and uh, he blamed us. And finally he said something that, that was really definitive for me. He said, look it. He knew my background. He knew that I really did want to have and make a difference. He says, so look, if you could do anything you wanted to do, money, regulations weren't a problem, what would you do to really impact poverty? And you show up my office next month and show me. And he set up an appointment. So it was like fascinating. You know, I, when you come from a poor family, there's always a box. You're trying to push the box, but there's always a box. And here's this guy whose father was governor and, and he had no box. And, and all of a sudden it's like, well, I know it's BS, but what if there was no box? What if I could do anything I wanted to do? And I came out of all that experience. And for two weeks, I thought about what would I do to really impact poverty and came to the conclusion I didn't know. And I'd been in the sector for years, right? So I had to show up at his office though. <laughs> so I'm standing there in his office in front of him and he turns to me and says, okay, so Mauricio, what would you do? And I said, you know, I don't know what I would do, but my mother figured out what to do to get me out. And for that fact, I think most mothers and fathers would know what to do for their own kids. So instead of spending all this money on us, professionals, and whatever, why don't we set this money aside, offer it to the families that they show us how they would get their own families out. And that's my work. We basically set aside this money we normally spend on professionals. We offer it to the families that they actually lead their own work. But we use the American model, which is, you know, the way this country built the reputation that my mother was after, your land of opportunity, whatever, is that entire communities of Irish and Polish, Chinese, you name it, African Americans after slavery built huge townships. Tulsa was the Black Wall Street, right? So it was inherent in everybody that you actually, if you work together, you could impact poverty at scale. So basically what we started is, okay, let's go back to the historic model, make the research available directly to them and see what happens. And what happened was they're changing their lives themselves, not because we're leading them, but because they're leading their own work.
that's our work now. <laughs>